Hello, this is pre-algebra lesson 7-7, analyze linear equations. In this lesson, we'll be able to write equations to describe linear relationships. Let's look at explore it. A group of college students developed a solar powered car and entered it in a race. Cool. The car travels at a constant speed of 100 meters per four seconds. Okay. Um, let's look at part A. What representation can show the distance that the car will travel over time? Okay, what representation using mathematical expression can show the distance the car will travel over time? What do you think? You can use, you can use expressions, algebraic expressions, or a graph, you just have to list them, okay? You can say a graph can be used to show the distance the car will travel over time. Where x would be the time. Y would represent the distance. Okay. Um, you can also represent it using a linear equation used to show um same relationship. Okay, and there are multiple other ways, but these are these should probably be one of the first things that you can come up with. Okay, part B, what expression can show the distance the car will travel over time? What kind of expression can show the distance the car will travel over time? So part A was representation. So it's more like a graph, okay? like to represent, a linear equation could be an ex more, more of an expression. So you can say an expression that models the distance the car travels over time is 25x to be specifically because the speed is um, 100 meters per four seconds. So 100 meters per four second means it's 25 meters over one second, right? So your slope is 25. So you can represent it using 20, y equals 25x, where x represents y equals 25x, where x represents the number of seconds, y represents the distance um, in, what was it, miles? Yeah, meters, yeah, distance in meters. Okay. And part C, compare the representation and the expression, which shows the distance traveled over time more clearly. Is it the graph or the linear equation? Well, it depends, right? If you want a specific point, then graph might not be specific because you might not be able to identify points clearly um, in the graph sometimes, right? So um, linear equation is more useful and more accurate when you know it, the exact amount of one variable, and then you can use the expression to figure it out the other variable, right? Um, so we can say the graph shows the distance um, traveled over time more clearly we're going to do both, okay? Because it is easy to see at a, at a glance a distance traveled 
uh, any given time. And you can also say the ex the the equation shows the distance traveled over time more clearly. Uh, so you can choose either way, okay? But you need to reason it um, correctly because it um, gives more accurate uh, values for each variable. Okay. So reason it out. This versus this, okay? But you can write either, either sentence. Okay, focus on math practices. How would a representation or expression change if the speed was converted to miles per minute? Mm. Instead of meters per second, how would you change it? Well, 25, meters per second is what we have. We need to know how many meters is in a mile, right? And then you can convert the meters to miles by, um, you know, uh, by using the unit uh, ratio, unit rate and then you can cancel out the meter. And then you can cancel out the second by multiplying how many seconds, 60 seconds in one minute. And so you can cancel out the second and multiply 25 by 60 and divide it by whatever meter, how many meters are going to a mile. Okay, so let's, um, Let's describe that. We don't actually have to solve it, okay? The steepness of the line on the graph might change, but the graph would be similar to the current because we're talking about how many miles per minute. So your graph might change a little bit, but it's still the same speed. The graph changes because um, the, um, the grid line changes because what, how many, how much mile uh, is represented and how, much, how many minute is represented would be different from how many meters and seconds we're representing in each grid line of the graph, okay? but it would still be similar. All right, let's look at the next page. So the topic essential question, how does the slope, how does slope relate to the equation for a proportional relationship? We'll explore more into the slope of the proportional relationship. Example one, relate constant of proportionality to slope. The students in Meg's class are building a fence around the class garden. How can they use the pricing for the different lengths of fencing to determine the cost for 50 feet of fencing? Okay, so for six feet, it costs $30, 15, $75, 24 feet, $120. Do we see a pattern here? Look for relationships. What is the relationship between the length of fencing and the cost? So six feet, you have $30, $75 for 15 feet, $120 for 24 feet. Are these ratios the same? Are they similar? So let's simplify. Six divided by six is one. So how many dollars per feet? Three divided by six is five. $5 per feet. Is the pricing the same? We'll divide this by five, divide this by five, um, and then divide this by three. And yeah, it's $5 per one foot again. What about this one? 
yeah, it's $5 per one foot. So we have the same pricing per foot. It's $5 per foot. So your slope is $5 per foot. Um, you can also um, represent these as points where your X represents the length in feet and your Y represents the total cost in dollars. So your first point is going to be 6 comma 30. Second point is 15 comma 75. Third point is 24 comma 120. And you can graph it on your graph. You see that 15 comma 75, 24 comma 120. And then you can keep going on with your line and see how much we need for you know, however feet we have. So um, in order to graph the line accurately on your graph, you're going to need an, an exact slope, right? So you want to figure out how much do we go up by how much we go to the right. So that's gonna be rise over run. And this is basically your slope every one foot you go right every length in one foot you're gonna your total cost is gonna rise five dollars so that's your slope your horizontal distance is one your vertical distance is five so if you go over 10 five over one is also the same as 50 over 10. so if you go to the right 10 feet you're gonna move up fifty dollars. Okay, so your slope is gonna be two squares by two squares over here. Two square, two square, two square, two square. Two square on the horizontal line represents ten feet. Two squares on the vertical line represents fifty feet, or fifty dollars. So that's gonna be our slope, and you graph them, graph them, graph them. Okay. So 50 feet of fencing is going to be here. The point on the line for 50 feet corresponds to $250. That's your point. So it costs $250 would be your answer. Okay, let's look at try it. Write an equation to describe the relationship shown in the graph. So you need to figure out the slope and put it in the equation where y is equal to slope times x, okay? This is a basic form of a linear equation. So here, figure out how much you rise um, in miles per how much you go to the right, okay? If it goes left, it's a negative slope. If it goes down, it's also negative, um, but you're going positive both ways. So right now, just think about positive values. So write an equation to describe the relationship shown in the graph. So if you can do it by yourself, come back when you're ready. Okay, are we ready? Yeah, so count the slope. How much rise over run do we have? So you can see that these points are exactly on the grid, uh, on the cross section of the grid lines, right? So you can count them. How much do you go up versus how much you run? So 20 miles and one gallon, right? So 20 miles, one gallon. Every time you go up and go right, that's where your points are. So that's gonna be your slope, 20 miles per gallon. So um, that's gonna be your slope. But if you use the slope equation, rise over run is whatever your points are, you're gonna subtract that. Um, subtract your Y values over subtract your X values. That's gonna give you your slope because rise Oh, uh, is going to be whatever two points you have is going to be the vertical distance between them, right? So that means the bigger point minus the smaller point is going to give you the vertical distance. But it could also be the smaller point um, minus the bigger point the, for the y value. Um, it's still going to be the same as if you 
put the x values um, in the same way, in the same order, okay? So um, we're gonna say 80 minus, uh, we're using three and 80. So three comma 60 and four comma 80 are the points we're using here, seems like. So 80 minus 60 divided by four minus three is gonna give us 20 over one gallon. Okay, so the equation of the line is 20x, y equals 20x. Okay, so convince me, how do the equations y equals mx and y equals kx compare? How are they similar? How are they different? Obviously, m and k are pretty much the same thing, um, and they look similar, and they're obviously the same line. It looks like the same thing. Uh, it's just we're representing it differently. M is the slope. K represents the constant proportionality. Um, but they're they're equivalent. The two equations are equivalent. Okay. So write down the two equations are equivalent, which means they're equal, which means M is equal to K as well. Okay. So they're the same thing. The slope is equal to the constant of proportionality. Okay, so we've got the next page, example two. Write a linear equation from two points. Okay. So now if you have any two points, you should be able to um, figure out the slope by using the slope equation. Um, example two, a drone descends, go down into a mining cave. The graph relates its distance below ground to time. Write an equation that describes the relationship. So we see something that goes down now. As X increases, Y goes down. So that means you're probably gonna get a negative slope because when Y goes down, it's negative. Um, you have negative uh, direction, okay? Uh, as X goes from left to right. So step one, we're gonna find the slope of the line, pick two points um, where we can pick three comma negative 750 and two, comma, negative 500, and subtract them. Um, be careful with the negatives. If you subtract the negative, that means you're adding that value. So negative 750 plus 500 is negative 250, okay? And then three minus two. But that also works the same if you flip the order of those two points. It's also the same if you say 500, minus negative 750 over, but you have to have to start with the same point. So five, negative 500 has, um, is corresponding to X when it's equal to two. So you have to subtract two minus three. Does that make sense? And then you'll get the same answer. That's gonna be um, negative 500 plus 750. So that's gonna be positive 250 but you will have negative one in the denominator, which is, which they're both equal to 250, okay? So 250 over negative one is the same as negative 250 over one. So it doesn't matter if you switch the order, you just have to be careful with the negatives, okay? So the slope is negative 250, the drone descends 250 meters per second. It goes down 250 meters per second. And then we're gonna write the equation of the line, y equals mx is basically y equals negative 250x. So you can find any points um, on the line using the equation. At example three, we're gonna graph an equation of the form y equals mx. A recipe for trail mix calls for one cup of raisins for every two cups of granola. Write an equation that describes the relationship between raisins and granola. Graph the line. So step one, we're gonna find the equation of the line. Um, the slope is rise over run. 
So that's plus one and that's plus two. So it's slope is one over two, okay? And you can substitute that slope in your equation y equals one over two x and you can graph the line, okay? Oh, oh, we actually have to get the slope from the from the problem and then we, we're gonna graph it, okay? So one cup of raisin for every two cups. Um, so granola is, granola is, gonna be one cup of raisin. So uh, raisin on top because your Y value has to be on top over your X value, okay? So one over two cups of granola. Okay, so one over two, and you're gonna go up one over two, up one over two, and that's your point, up one over two, that's your point, up one over two, that's your point, and then connect the lines, connect the points, okay? And so let's try writing the equation of the line and try part A and graph the line y equals negative three x. See if you can do it by yourself. Come back when you're ready. Okay, are you ready? So what's the equation of this line? You count the slope. That's gonna be two and that's five for each um, y and x grid lines. So you go up two units for y and then five units for x, right? So that means your slope is two over five, okay? So your equation must be y equals two over five x. Check your answers, did you get it, did you get it right? You gotta look at how much it represents. Okay, you can't just say, oh, that's one box over one box. That means your slope is always going to be one box over one box if it's if it's drawn like that, right? And that's not true. So part B, graph the line y equals negative 3x. Your slope is negative 3. That means it's also negative 3 over 1 or 3 over negative 1, either way. But you're going to count rise over run, right? Negative rise means you go down. Negative run means you go left. So if you go down three, you need to go right one. So that means down three and right one for every point. And this one means up three units and left one unit for every point. So it should be the same. Either way, it's just going to different directions. Okay, from zero comma zero, you're gonna count your slope. You you can go down three, one, two, three. Wait, that's uh that's four. So this must be negative two, and that's negative three. Down three and right one. This is one. So over here, or from from zero comma zero, you can go up three, two and three, and left one over here. Okay, but it should be the same slope. Okay, up three, so that's six. Up three, left one. Up three units, left one. Okay, here, down three units, one, two, three, negative six, right one. Down three units again, right one. And it should give you a straight line. If not, you probably have counted your slope wrong. So connect all the points. Whoops. Sorry if it's not that accurate. Um, yeah, there. Okay, so that should be your points and the line. You can put an arrow and an arrow over here so that it indicates that your line is going to that direction um, forever. <laughs> okay, so that was the equation and that's the graph. So use the slope to write an equation and graph the line. So let's summarize our lesson. We learned about the equation of, for a proportional relationship being y equals mx. Okay, that's the basic form where M represents the slope of the line and your slope is rise over run in your graph. 
Okay. And positive slope looks like that. Negative slope looks like that. Okay. Positive slope, negative slope. Okay. Positive slope goes up when you when your x increases so from left to right it goes up from left to right your negative slope goes down okay all right that was um that was lesson 7-7 seven seven, analyzing linear equations we'll continue with 7-8 understand the wider step of a line in the next video if you have any more questions please ask miss king in class Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.